After playing over 1000 hours of Hunt Showdown, one would likely say there's nothing new to discover. And you'd be right, besides some tiny quirks, there's nothing significant left to see. But there's this funny thing our brains do. When you're performing an action over and over again, the little noggin shuts down and fills in the blanks while you're not paying any attention. It's a normal thing to happen, our brains lack efficiency more than the act of dissecting every little detail around us. So what happens when you do something so often, that one time your brain doesn't go along with the motions and instead throws you a curveball? Take a look at this for example. Did you spot it? Alright, let's look again and watch carefully this time. What is going on with the weapon swap speed of the Nagant Officer Carbine? Does it really swap faster or is it just the fast animation playing tricks on my eyes? Does this happen with any other gun in the game? There are many guides about all sorts of hunt topics, but there is absolutely nothing about this. I don't really blame any other YouTubers or streamers for not touching these subjects because honestly, who the hell thinks about this kind of stupid stuff? Well, me apparently. The game's weapon stats don't display this information, so logically, you'd assume every gun behaves identically. But are they really the same? I decided to cover every weapon's draw and holster speed in Hunt Showdown and settle this obscure mystery that you surely thought about before. That means all pistols, rifles, shotguns and all their variants, special weapons, melee weapons, all offensive tools and finally all world spawn melee weapons will be put to the test. So, either I'm breaking new ground in hunt studies or I'm about to spend a lot of time researching something that's not even there. After all, what better excuse to make another video about Hunt Showdown? Before we go any further, remember I have a Patreon channel you can support to your heart's content. Additionally, I have a Twitter account which I never speak badly about. With this out of the way, it's time for a bit of science. Having never studied a specific game mechanic before, it's only fair to lay up some ground rules. For those who want to see the data or the test themselves, here's a timestamp to take you there. All the results will be linked in a public google sheet because I have a particular axe to grind with people hiding this stuff behind discord servers that might disappear without a moment's warning. You know who you are? Stop doing it! Whoever said that the internet's forever lied to you and the only way these things survive is if they're out in the open for people to copy on their own devices. With this existential rant out of the way, what will I measure? First, I look at how fast each gun is drawn. I define this as the time frame between the moment your gun's ammo is being displayed in the HUD and when the gun is fired from the hip in the hunter control scheme, with the HUD showing the first frame of the round expenditure animation. I initially didn't want to fire, fearing that levering and fanning would skew the results, but you'll see later that it's better I did it this way. That's because once you start changing the FOV as part of entering hip fire mode, any shot will be processed only after the hunter completes the transition to this posture. In other words, when you equip a weapon and hold the right mouse button to aim, the left click to shoot works as a movie clapperboard. So doing this reduces the risk of inconsistency on my part. For the sake of demonstration, here is how it looks. Here's the moment the ammo counter starts displaying the weapon that's being drawn. That's the start of the draw animation. And now, as the weapon is being fired, you can see in the HUD the bullet being expanded. So this is the end point of the draw animation. The second thing I'll investigate is the time it takes to holster a gun. It starts with the first frame when the HUD is being displayed as the weapon switch is being initiated and it ends with the last frame the HUD displays the ammo pool of the selected gun. This is done to see if there is a difference between the two actions. In theory, there should be no difference between the two, but as one of my favorite sayings go, you would be very surprised. 
While the potential discrepancies triggered my curiosity enough to proceed with this silly study, this research aims to show how all weapons in Hunt behave and draw conclusions from there. Do pistols draw faster than shotguns or rifles? Do scopes or melee attachment change things? Are akimbo pistols slower to draw than one at a time? Does fanning and levering make you draw faster? As a disclaimer, I'm not going to measure the time it takes to switch a gun right after shooting it because this is not going to be a quick swapping study. On the one hand, a lot of salt and frustration was poured over the topic some years ago when Crytek patched it out of the game. The ignorance and neglect of both this community and whoever is making decisions at Crytek is worrying for the future of this game that many of us have called home for years. Yeah, certainly not going to touch this one, but on the other hand, I'm concerned about bloating what is already a very hefty pool of data. For the purposes of collecting my evidence, I've created this beauty of an Excel. This is not the document's final form, what I ended up doing is so much worse and totally befitting the experience of the Excel line in my CV, you already see that I've also taken the liberty of adding the game version of each weapon introduced in Hunt. I'm doing this because the posture bug's findings showed it could play a part in the gun inconsistencies. In December 2021, Hunt streamer Huge discovered that several guns in the game had view model postures when crouched and aiming down the sights that did not match the first person view, leaving hunters more exposed than they would have been expecting. One common theme was that guns added post launch had a higher incidence of this happening and thus it makes sense to me to keep Keep this in mind. Additionally, it's a nice thing to do when we're in what's most likely the last significant patch before the engine update. For those that don't follow Hunt that much, recently it was announced that on August 15th, a new version of the CryEngine will be deployed alongside many significant changes that were not detailed at the time of this video's release, but are overall labeled as a new beginning for the game. You can call my efforts an attempt to take a snapshot of a little piece of gaming history, he said humbly. For total transparency, all the tests were performed on the 1.16.1.1 patch. If my findings regarding weapon swaps show inconsistencies that need to be clarified, it could be a sign that Crytek will need to perform a complete pass on the existing arsenal and implement measures to prevent future weapons from having the same issues. This is me totally not attempting to just justify wasting hours searching through the ancient patch notes to pinpoint the release patch of each of Hunt's 150 weapons and variants and then recording each one of them with 5 takes each and then verifying them so I can put them in the Excel how I'm about to test is gonna give me a little bit of headache. I settled with displaying the Xnote stopwatch app on top of the game and went with a good old fashioned use the same key to switch weapons and start the stopwatch. I initially tried to use some fancy macros and stuff and um, yeah, that was a big fail. For some reason the stopwatch starts a few milliseconds before Hunt registers a swap button, but I'll take it anyway, I can do math for 150 times multiplied by 5 times 2. Naturally, I'll consider the discrepancy when manually vetting the data, and the same goes for the times I forgot to turn on the stopwatch and relied on my video player's timer to get the results. Since I'm only human, if that wasn't clear enough, and can't automate the entire process, I'll measure 5 times for each weapon and make an average out of them. I suspect it will take forever with this many tries. Future me here, it actually did take me forever, my eyes are fucked, oh my god. So it's not like I'm making things easy for myself anyway. Because I'll be using video recordings to verify my findings, I'll cap the frame rate at 60 frames per second to keep everything nice and consistent. And not have angry comments that I forgot to do that. Oh boy, that was quite the setup to present. Alright now, let's get into the tests, starting with the pistols. Starting with the Bornheim, we already see some things that will be a common theme throughout the study to a certain extent. First of all, drawing and holstering have different durations, with guns drawing quite a bit faster than they holster. For the most part. 
For the Bornheim, we're talking about roughly 35 milliseconds to draw and 50 to holster. Moreover, all of its variants share the same characteristics and fall within the margin of error. This includes the Bornheim match, which is a medium slot gun. This trend will occur across most of the weapons I'll cover, so I'll only show the main weapons onwards to avoid overloading the video with redundant information and totally not for me to avoid editing so much, uh, but you never heard this from me. So, in short, the vast majority of variations, whether they include scopes, melee attachments or ammo extensions, or even if they occupy a different slot size, do not change the draw and holster speed. Of course, the Excel spreadsheet will include every single one of them anyway, and you can draw your own conclusions from there. Moving on, the trusty conversion pistol aligns with the Bornheim and has the same draw and holster speed. This is joined by the Pax, Dolch, Nagant and Nagant Officer. The latter almost disappointed me because it's the number one gun on my list of suspect... Of th wow, that, wa that was one way to pronounce the word of suspects, but it turned out it's just a janky animation tricking my monkey brain. Look at this nasty clipping though, Ew. But you already noticed I left out quite a few pistols. That's because, oh boy, are they interesting. Let's start with the Caldwell New Army. It's considered a budget fast firing pair to the shotguns and single fire rifles and the theory is that you pop an opponent with something like a Sparks and then quickly switch the new army for the finisher. Only that its draw time is 60 milliseconds. That's almost 60% slower than all previous pistols. Strangely enough, its holster speed is still 50 milliseconds, the same as all other pistols in Hunt. Next up is the Scottfield family. The base gun, the brawler, Spitfire and Swift also share the same stats as the Caldwell New Army. But to make things even funnier, because of course there had to be an extra quirk, the Scottfield precision draws in 35 milliseconds because potato I suppose and I can't even blame the release date for this one because it came out at the same time as the Spitfire and Swift so okay the uppercut also has its precision variants making a separate note. All the uppercuts draw in slightly more than 35 milliseconds, but the regular version holsters in 55 milliseconds compared to just 50 from the uppercut precision and uppercut precision deadeye. It's not going to be the only time I'll point out differences worthy of being labeled within the margin of error, but while my test didn't wholly eliminate variation from the equation, this discrepancy was consistently highlighted in cases like this, so it's worthy a mention. The next strange pistol on the list is the Lemat. Both it and the upper mat variant have a draw time of about 50 milliseconds, but to my surprise, the upper mat holsters were slightly faster than the regular pistol, again, just 5 milliseconds slower. And because there will be definitely questions about this, no, it doesn't make any difference if you fire the primary or the shotgun underbarrel when it comes to draw speed. And this applies also to the Lamette carbine and to the drilling. And finally, the Sparks pistol draws at 60 milliseconds and holsters at about 50. What's more interesting is that you can still carry two different ammo types when you dual wield it. How did I not think that's something you can do until now? Speaking of dual wielding, they're also consistent in their inconsistency. Almost all of them draw at 70 milliseconds and holster at 75, making them extremely slow if you plan to rush a compound and quickly switch from your other guns in the middle of a fight. The only exception to this rule is the Bornheim family, which keeps its high draw speed for some reason, but holsters at 50, which is the same as having a single pistol. If your strategy is to pop in and out of cover and blast enemies while switching guns like crazy, the Duelies are among the worst options in the game until you fire the first shot. Of course, if you get the timing right, you might be able to fire both guns almost simultaneously, but the recoil makes it impossible to work with unless you're glued to your opponent. Huh? On the other hand, this means that dual wielding the slower guns, such as the new army, Scottfield or Sparks pistol, involve the slightest sacrifice compared to their single gun variants. Although I'd love to see someone attempting to be a movement demon in a compound with dually Sparks pistols. I know I'm gonna draw a lot of hate for saying this, but the way they handle it makes me think they're bugged and should draw faster. 
When you draw and fire a single pistol, the animation and transition to hip fire after pressing the trigger look and feel smooth with a natural flow. Dual wielding, on the other hand, feels clunky in all instances. The guns jerk as if they're stuck with glue after being pulled out when your hunter transitions into hip fire mode. This is a significant contributor to this wild discrepancy. Now I'm waiting to be blamed for every instance of hunters being domed by dually sparks pistols from 200 meters after Crytek buffs them when they see my complaint. And last but not least, does fanning affect draw speed? No. All guns keep the same draw speed with the tray. Unfortunately, you'll just have to contend with showing other players how skillful you are when you headshot them from unnervingly far away and nothing else. Now it's time to move on to the bread and butter of hunt, the rifles. Starting with the most consistent, we have the Berthier, the Centennial, Caldwell Marathon, Grilling, Martini Henry, Mosey Nagant, Sparks, and Springfield. This mouthful of a list all draw at around 50 milliseconds and a holster at about 65. You might already notice that quite a few rifles are missing from this list because... Um, it's a doozy. First of all, while Sparks is part of the regular list I just mentioned, its discrepancy to the pistol variant raises some questions, even more so when considering that this is the only variant with a different draw and holster speed. This adds another brick to my suspicion that there is no intention in these differences because there'd be no reason for the rifles and the pistols to work differently in the way they do here. It would make sense if the pistol drew faster, but this looks random. Next, the label draws slightly slower at 55 milliseconds. This is close to being within the margin of error, but I've consistently hit this average across all of its variants, so it's noteworthy to mention. The Vetterly is perfectly aligned with the norm, except for the Cyclone variant. This one holsters consistently faster than all the other variants for some reason, yet again, nothing that would suggest it was done on purpose. The Mako Carbine has the same draw speed as the main group of rifles, but it holsters slower at more than 75 milliseconds, making it the slowest rifle to switch away from. Next up we have the Springfield Crag, which draws faster at 40 milliseconds, but keeps the same holster speed as the norm. Now we are getting into the weirder part of this list. Remember that the Lamat pistols drew and holstered in half a second? Look at the carbine variants because while they draw just as fast as the regular rifles, they holster in 75 milliseconds. The fact that these and the Mako were introduced in patches 1.15 and 1.16 respectively makes me believe something was done incorrectly around their development time and it's not a coincidence they act the same. And that's not even the weirdest thing though. I am pleased to introduce to you the three fastest firearms in all of Hunt Showdown with a whopping 35 milliseconds both to draw and holster, making them the gunslinger's dream. A round of applause please to the Nagant Officer Carbine its Deadeye variant and Nitro Express? What the fu- What do you mean this delete hunter button is as quick to the draw as the legendary head clicker? The officer carbine having these stats makes its preference among the top players even more explainable than it already was. Not only it's faster than any reasonable rifle, but it also allows for very quick switches to your secondary in case you need to do so in the middle of a fight in ways that no other guns allow. But it's pretty amusing that the 3 slot carbines holster faster than the 1 slot pistol variants. Finally, we have the guns that won the bayou, the Winfield and Winfield C with its vast plethora variant. Mostly, they all share the same traits as the ordinary rifles mentioned earlier, but they have an interesting quirk that's not shared by any other weapon family in this game. For some reason, all the Vandal versions of the Winfield C draw slightly faster than their full-size brothers. Again, minimal difference, but the consistency of my findings make it look like not just a rounding error. And finally, regarding the traits, 
Levering makes no difference to the draw speeds of the Winfield and Mako rifles, but there is a critical mention to make. Most rifles need to cycle the bullet as a separate action after firing. For most of you, this comes in play only if you switch from your rifle right after firing a round because when you switch back to it, you'll still have to cycle before you can attempt to aim and fire. Levering performs the two actions simultaneously, so while not affecting the initial draw speed, it saves you future time. If you ever died while cycling a bullet from a freshly drawn rifle, you'd know the pain and how valuable this thing can be. Just as an example, let's look at this little clip. And actually the second guy had a terminus, so if he didn't have to chamber a new round, he might have even been able to kill Gunsmack in this one. Uh, I mean skill issue? Moving on to the shotguns, we have all the repeating guns grouped together. The Crown, Spectre, Terminus and Slate have draw speeds of 50 milliseconds and holsters at 65 milliseconds, just like the rifles do. While this is the weapon group with the highest proportion of guns sharing stats, the discrepancies of the rifle and Romero are on another level of strangeness. The rival draws and holsters in 50 milliseconds. Ironically, this works more to its benefit because shotguns rely a lot on timing and the identical draw and holster speed can make it easier to learn their rhythm. On the other hand, the good old reliable Romero is one of the strangest guns in the game. While it draws in 50 milliseconds, it's the only gun in the arsenal that holsters in precisely 40 milliseconds. This does not apply to the hand cannon version though, because it boasts a generally disappointing 55 milliseconds holster time, making it the only small gun variant with such a downgrade. And you wanna know the best part? Despite also being a small version, the Romero Romero Hatchet only shares the stats with the other Romeros. As some might remember, the Hatchet variant received a nerf some time ago and its reload speed was slowed down slightly. Because the draw and holster speed remained unchanged, it's yet another situation where it's more likely that these differences are an accident and not a design choice. Finally, levering once again does not affect the draw speed of the terminus. However, the remark about cycling is even more relevant here since this gun has the lengthiest cycling animation out of all lever action weapons. And besides, why the hell would you use the terminus without it to begin with? The special weapon category has its own quirks due to their unique nature. Of course, covering these is not about pointing out discrepancies, but lessons can still be taken. The crossbow has a draw speed of 50 milliseconds and draw speed of 60. The hand crossbow only differs by holstering 5 milliseconds quicker and it may be the first occasion where designing this intentionally would make sense if that ship hasn't sailed a long time ago. Despite both filling similar roles with shotguns, seeing the crossbow holster a bit faster than them is welcome. That's because even with the bolt thrower trait, the big crossbow reloads slower than any shotgun except the Alamo and its unwieldy contraption of a reload system. But for the life of me, I can't understand what the hell this weird icon that shows up right before the hand crossbow releases the bolt is. Is this supposed to be an ancient UI artifact brought back to life by spaghetti code? The hunting bow is a strange weapon due to its firing and reload mechanisms. It feels clunky when you draw it and fire an arrow at minimum strength and it makes sense considering that pulling the arrow is a separate action. Thus, it should be no surprise that it takes 80 milliseconds to draw and fire an arrow at minimum pull strength, longer than the 67 required to holster the bow. One thing to note is that the trait 100 hands changes its heavy melee attack animation, but the speed remains the same as not having it. And now we're getting to the melee weapons, both from the inventory and the world spawns. Because why not? To test the drawing speed on them, I went up close and personal with the mannequin and counted the first frame of the damage tick on the mannequin as the end of the draw. I did this for both the light and heavy attacks. 
I know it's not a perfect method, since some weapons attack in an arc that doesn't hit in front of your hunter immediately, but it's better than nothing. The baseball bat opens up by drawing with a light swing in 50 milliseconds and 95 in a heavy one while being put away in 50. Moving on with the machete, it performs its light attack in 50, is heavy in 75 and holsters in 55 milliseconds. But the delay between the animation of the machete swinging past the throat of this mannequin and the tick of the damage being displayed makes me feel so much pain, oh god. The cavalry saber and katana have the same light and heavy attack speeds with 60 milliseconds and 85 respectively. Their holster speeds differ with the katana being 15 milliseconds faster. But what makes this weapon special is the martialist trait which brings its draw speed down to an incredible 20 milliseconds. I never play with it, but I can see why it's more than a meme choice for some. Still, two trade points for this Crytek really? The two bigger melee weapons are slower as expected. The combat axe and the railroad hammer have identical stats, with 85 milliseconds for a light attack, 1.2 seconds for a heavy strike and 65 milliseconds to holster them. The bomb lance is interesting because it is a melee weapon with a launcher attached to it. It draws in 70 milliseconds if you fire it secondary firing mode and holsters just as fast. This is actually the fastest way to dispense damage from the bomb lance because a light attack only hits at 95 milliseconds while the heavy strike brings down the pain after 1.3 seconds, which might feel like an eternity in close range fights. But it also showcases that its secondary fire makes makes it the game's slowest shotgun, assuming you're using steel balls to fill that role. So, mastering this weapon takes more than just pretending he's a shotgun with a long blade attached to it, partly due to this reason. The world weapons are all interesting because they're variations of the ones I mentioned before. The sledgehammer shares the same stats as the railroad hammer, the axe is about as fast as the combat axe and the pitchfork behaves almost identically with the cavalry saber but has a slightly faster holster speed. The only genuinely unique weapon here is the bonk master itself, our beloved shovel. It hits its light attack marginally quicker than the sledgehammer, takes as long to do a heavy attack and holsters a bit faster. I also looked at how a silent impacts. <laughs> Fuck no, my sanity is not so cheap. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. Fuck you mannequins. The melee tools bring their share of discrepancies though. First of all, the heavy knife is basically a machete with a slightly slower attack speed, as if there wasn't enough reason to not use it. Off. Oh, off, oh, heavy knife, there's my reason for not using it. Carrying on, the dusters have a 40 millisecond light attack speed, 75 for heavy strikes and holstering in 50. That sounds fine and dandy until you realize that the knife exists and it's much faster with 23 milliseconds for a light attack, 48 for a heavy attack and holsters just about the same speed. The poor dusters are only better in terms of stamina, consumption and not exploding emulators but that certainly doesn't compensate for its poor draw speed. No wonder it feels so bad to use in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But its final nail in the coffin is the fantastic knuckle knife. Its heavy attack and holster are identical to the knife, but it does its light attack in just 15 milliseconds. It's amazing how outclassed the dusters are. I'd almost feel sorry for them if I ever picked them in any other way than by mistake. When it comes to throwable melee tools, the only differences between the axes and the knives is that the axes holster in 80 milliseconds and not 45 as the knives. Light and heavy attacks on a draw have identical values between them, but interestingly, having the assailant trait makes the heavy attack on the throwing axes a bit faster. But take this value with a big pinch of salt because assailant also radically changes the angle of the attack so it can significantly impact how long it takes to strike a damage stick on the spot I'm looking at when I'm taking the tests. Since I couldn't leave them out, both derringers and the flare pistol draw and holster at the exact same speeds. Now the meta players can rest easily when they choose which one to take in a match, thank goodness. Eh, 
and because I was scraping at the bottom of the barrel, I looked at all throwable consumables. They are all consistent with each other, but I'm not even gonna bother putting them on here. Why did I record all of this? What the hell? So, what have we found from this? As I mentioned at the start, I was expecting that drawing and holstering would have the same speed, but I was proving wrong when I saw that only 7 guns in the entire arsenal have this characteristic. Also, the weapon category influences each gun's speed when performing these actions. As expected, the fastest guns in the game to draw and holster are the pistols. The rifles are slightly slower than them at both categories and then you have the shotguns which the main ones are in the same line as rifles but if you include the Romeros their holster time drops down a bit. Does knowing about this stuff makes much of a difference for your average hunt player? Not really. Maybe top 6 stars and high level movement players will care and use this to their advantage, but there are plenty of discrepancies which leaves an interesting question. How much of this is intentional? Most definitely, in my humble opinion, these are not deliberate design choices but oversights and mistakes that are compounded over time. At the same time, it's difficult to say that there aren't bits and pieces of purposeful design when you look at the speeds of the pistols or the difference brought by dual wielding them. But unfortunately, there are so many weird things that you generally can't tell anymore. Additionally, there's no single patch I could point my finger at and blame us the source because even guns that were added in version 1.0 can be different even if, logically, they shouldn't. I am very well aware that Crytek have their hands full with delivering the engine update among the rest of the things they have lined up. So, something as seemingly unconsequential, I would not expect it to be too high on their list of priorities, especially in the near future. But they should do a pass and bring weapons to the same values. Even if over 99% of the player base is completely oblivious about this issue, it subtly influences the gameplay experience. Most of the game's fastest guns happen to be the same guns that are most often associated with being nice to use or smooth, while slower weapons fall in the territory of I'm not sure why I don't enjoy it as much. These results confirmed my positive and negative biases towards some weapons and I wouldn't be surprised if others would as well after seeing their numbers. The alternative solution is to make this information transparent. But but good luck not bloating an already crowded UI. And good luck getting this greenlit when Crytek promised a rework of the game's user interface, throwing something like this is just what it's needed. Well, that's it for now. What started as a curiosity that made me very worried it would be a complete waste of time showed me a very different facet of a game I simply can't let go no matter how many hours I've already logged in. God knows what excuse I'll come up next year to make another Hunt Showdown video, but until then, while I ponder this, thanks to everyone for watching my video. Click the magical buttons that will very likely change positions because YouTube can't keep a stable UI designed to save their own lives and share this with your like-minded fellows. Until next time, cheers!